Good morning, everyone. We have some very hearty people out here this morning on Sunday, even though it is a very rainy morning in Princeton. So we are grateful for those who chose to, to get up. Of course, you may have woken up with the thunder that was going at 4 o'clock this morning as well. Heard about a whole bunch of dogs that woke up at 4 o'clock as well. So <laughs> um, welcome to everyone who's joining us um, online, either um, live with us or later in the day as well. We're very glad that you are choosing to worship our Lord with us. I will start off with a few announcements. Um, today is communion. It's the first Sunday of the month, and as long as it is not pouring cats and dogs and lightning out, I will be out in the um, parking lot um, between 9.15 and 10.15 for drive through communion um, today. So if you weren't able to make it um, for the in-person worship service, you are more than welcome to join us from 9.15 to 10.15 today. We have several meetings this week. Staff Parish is meeting at 5.45 on Tuesday via Zoom. Um, education is meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday at the church. And then on Thursday, we have several meetings. Nominations is meeting at the church at 6.30 p.m. And then the youth groups are meeting um, on Thursday as well. Junior high is at 1.30 p.m., and senior high at 7 p.m. here at the church. So just notice that those are a little different times for the youth groups, and they are not going to be at the parsonage. Um, I did that for the summer. They're giving me my house back for the, for the fall. So um, but we will have the youth groups here at the church this Thursday. The church building will be closed this coming Monday due to the Labor Day holiday, so just know that there won't be anybody here on Monday. Parents stay out. Um, again, as long as everything continues the way that it is, per the regulations that we are allowed, um, the Parents Stay Out program is planning to start September 15th. So if you know of anyone that has a two to four year old that would be interested in a break um, one to two times a week, have them contact Kelly Pelham or the church for an application. Sunday school will be starting up next week. It is Rally Sunday next week. It will look very different than any other rally day that we've had in our history, um, but we will have rally day next week. Um, there will be some classes for children, youth, and adults. Not all the classes are coming back um, at this point, but there are some. So please know that if you would like Sunday school, you are welcome to take part. Um, Children's Sunday school will now be meeting in what used to be the PDO room. Um, we also have the nursery that's going to be opened up again next week, again using very, very strict guidelines. So please know that um, that will be available. If your child would like to come um, to in-person Sunday school next week, that's wonderful at 9.15, or there can be take-home packets. So if you don't feel com comfortable coming back to, to worship yet for your, your child or your grandchild, please know that we can provide a packet as well. So let us know by the 9th of September so we can get that ready for you. Um, we also have the Kid Check system, so if you are already in that system, make sure that your information is up to date. And we did have the backpack blessing um, last week, and we forgot, I forgot, I, I forgot, in the Wednesday devotion to say thank you to Bruce and Sue Shriver for taking the pictures of the kids, so we really appreciate that. And all during the month of September, we are collecting change for the hour table ministry, even though we can't do that as we normally do, um, the, the board has decided to do some different things this fall with those people who are needing a meal. So, so we are collecting funds to be able to do that during the month of September. So if you'd like to do Change the World, um, please bring that in anytime this month. So I think those are the announcements for today. And if you are able, um, not if you're able, hopefully we all are able to be in prayer. So if you'll please bow your heads with me for our focusing prayer. Your call summons us, O God, to this time of remembering and renewal. We've sensed your presence through calm and storm, when we are comfortable and when we feel threatened. We've seen you in and through other people. Now in these moments of worship, we seek to be in deeper relationship with you. Touch our spirits, fill us with your love, and equip us for life in the world. Through Christ we pray. Amen. 
And now if you're able, please stand. And if you're able, stand. If not, in heart, um, we can all um, rise in expectation of our worship of God. If you'll please join me in the responsive call to worship. God is here to meet us. Glorify the name of the Lord. God welcomes each of us. Put your trust in the Holy One. We are here to celebrate God's presence and love. We honor the Lord's faithfulness in all situations. Our Creator seeks to establish community among us. God calls us to be people who care about each other. Where two or three or more gather in Christ's name, God is present to strengthen and uphold. And if you'll please remain standing as we hear our opening hymn, number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, sung by Randy and Crystal. Come thou fount of every blessing Turn my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise not easy when you've got all these different things to try and work with. Okay, so, hi children. I hope you're doing well at home, and hopefully you've woken up at this point. I know I would have liked to have slept in today, um, but hopefully you're up and you're, you're praising God with us. So, last week we had Uncle Ralph join Rufus, um, and he's here for one more week. Um, in the States before he has to head back to, to Brazil. So, how, how has your trip to the United States been? He says it was pretty, pretty fun. Did you get to do an awful lot? He walked around a lot, and you got to see what pine trees are like. That's kind of cool, because that's a little different than what you have in the rainforest, right? He said that they hurt a little bit more. Um, the needles are a little bit, <laughs> yeah, I, I can understand that. So, so what I decided to do today was um, talk about, besides your original family, Rufus, I wanted to talk just a little bit about some, another part of, of Rufus's family. So the way Rufus came to be in our church um, in terms of doing these children's messages, is that there is a Presbyterian pastor um, whose name is Kathleen Long Bostrom. And she has made all kinds of um, different books for kids dealing with church. And so um, Rufus and Ryan Go to Church is a book that we started off with, and I ended up being able to have Rufus come and join me. Well, our own Kelly McCune reached out via social media and talked to Kathleen, the author of these books, and explained what we were doing. And she was so excited about it that she wanted to know what we were doing, and she sent us a copy of her latest book. So, 
What I'm going to do today, since it's Labor Day and there's probably a lot of people sleeping in, and you would like to too, Rufus, right? Yeah, he said it was a little difficult getting up today, but the thunder helped. So what I want to do is I want to read this book um, to you guys and see what you think, okay? So again, this is by Kathleen Long Bostrom, and it's Will You Be Friends With Me? I wake early, you sleep late. My hair is curly, yours is straight. I say now, you say, wait, will you be friends with me? I like orange, you like pink. I use crayon, you use ink. Which is better, do you think? Will you be friends with me? I am messy, you are neat. I like salty, you like sweet. What's your favorite treat to eat? Will you be friends with me? Let's play leapfrog, jump up high. Maybe we will touch the sky. We can do it if we try. Will you be friends with me? I like morning, you like night. We're just different, that's all right. We don't need to fuss or fight. Will you be friends with me? Straight or curly, it's just hair. Ink or crayon, we can share. Neat or messy, I don't care. Will you be friends with me? We're all different, that's okay. Life is much more fun that way. You will be my friend, hooray. I'm glad you're friends with me. I think that is a very nice story, Rufus, because it kind of describes our friendship. You are a, a little hairier than I am, just a little bit. You come from a different country than I do. You like bananas, and I buy bananas for myself once every six months or something like that. But yet, we're still friends, right? Yes, and that's a very good thing. And boys and girls, that's what's wonderful about knowing other people besides those in our family. They have a different experience. They may have a different look than us. They may act a little differently, but we can all be friends because God made us in many different ways. And it's amazing what we can learn when we actually are friends with people besides just the ones that are right, right in our family or in our neighborhood. So be willing to ex explore friendships with people who are a little different than you because it will certainly expand um, your understanding and allow us to be able to um, experience God's great diversity in this world. So thank you, Uncle Ralph, for coming, for visiting. I'm glad that you were here as well. And may you have a very safe trip back to Brazil and stay healthy there too. He, he appreciates being welcomed here. And at this time, our special music um, is going to start something kind of new um, in terms of what we're doing for, for choir um, this year. I'm going to invite our, our choir director, Karen Newby, to come forward. And she is going to explain a little bit about what we are doing in terms of choir this year. If you would like to use the, the red microphone on the lectern. Hi. So um, you're about to see a video of our choir. It wasn't as easy as it looks. The way we did it is Al recorded all the piano parts, which he sent to me. I sent it to choir members. They recorded their singing, which they sent to me. I lined everything up on um, a program that I have to make it all mesh. Then we met via Zoom and tried to sing to it. This is the first time, so there are a couple tiny technical difficulties with it, but we're, we'll, we learned a lot, <laughs> and um, we'll do better. Uh, and then I just wanted to make a couple comments about the song, Oh, For a Thousand Tongues to Sing. It was written by Charles Wesley, uh, who uh, is a co-founder with his brother, John Wesley, of the Methodist Movement. Um, he wrote about 9,000 hymns and poems, um, which is the equivalent of writing one a day for 25 years. Um, and um, he was so prolific, he used to write songs in his head as he rode his horse from place to place. And um, 
One time he says that he rode his horse to Canterbury. He was so involved in thinking about a hymn, he has no idea how he even got there. All of a sudden, there he was. And um, another time, he was riding the song in his head on his horse, and he rushed the horse through a friend's garden up to the house and demanded something to write with so he could write down the hymn he'd been composing in his head. So very prolific, um, considered the poet laureate of Methodism. So this is his O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. We thank Karen very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so we, th I think we sounded like angels myself, but um, but <laughs> Karen spent a lot of time and effort on that, and, and it was it was actually kind of fun to do. Um, it's amazing what technology can allow us to do. We do want to give a shout out to Paul and Carol Bird. Um, they were able to sing on that, but unfortunately internet situations didn't allow for us to be able to have them on the, the recording of the, the Zoom part of it. So we are grateful that they are singing with us as well. So, and um, Bell Choir will be next week, I think, um, this week, this coming Sunday, right? Um, and so there will be socially distanced, spaced um, sextet, I believe. And then, so we'll have vocal choir and bell choir kind of alternating, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will have music for you. Let's just say that. We will have music for you. So, Our first scripture reading is um, the 149th Psalm, and this is taken from the New International Version. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. And now, if you are able, please stand for our gospel reading for this day. This is Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20, and this version is the message version. The words of Jesus. If a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along so that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest and try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you'll have to start over from scratch. Confront him with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. 
a no on earth is no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are gathered because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This past Monday, I did a funeral service for Raymond Schnarr. I rode with the funeral director to the Wyanette Cemetery for the graveside service. And as is typical when pastor and funeral director converse, the topic got around to the strangest situations that we've witnessed in the graveyard. This director told me about one family fight they had to break up because two brothers got into a fist fight at the committal service. In fact, they became so violent that they bumped into the casket and almost knocked it off the cart it was sitting on. Thankfully, after that, they got their minds together, settled down, and were able to finish the rest of that five-minute service. The power of disagreement and anger can be so intense that it doesn't seem to matter what should be happening at certain times. Emotions can get the best of us, and what we think is right has to be done, no matter the consequences. I admit I have never gotten into a fist fight. For one, I don't think violence is the way to settle most arguments. Secondly, I know I'd lose every time. But I've also seen how disagreements that get to the point of causing fights can cause damage that is never repaired. It's in our human nature to want our way in this life. You aren't human if you don't have preferences. And while it can be seen as simply nice when a person states that he or she doesn't have a preference, it's actually frustrating to me when people won't say what type of food they want or which movie they prefer when given a choice. I like to consider myself both nice and decisive. I'm usually fine with others getting what they want, but if you ask me for my opinion or give me the opportunity to choose, I will, for better or worse. But with that willingness to state my preference comes the inevitable, when someone will disagree and be equally as passionate in the opposite direction from where I'm leaning. Then we have to figure out some way of disagreeing while still getting along. And that, my friends, is typically not easy. Hear, these, hear this age-old story. Two sons were left a large piece of property by their father. For months, they fought over how this land would be divided. Finally, they brought the problem to their rabbi and asked him to solve it. Come back tomorrow, said the rabbi, and we'll talk. The next day, the brothers returned, and the rabbi gave them his solution. Toss a coin, he said to one of the brothers. To the other, he said, you call it, heads or tails. The one who wins the toss divides the land. That's no good, said one of the brothers. Then we're right back where we started. Not so, said the rabbi. The one who wins the toss divides the land. The other gets first choice of the parts. Now, I have to say that I've actually used that way of solving a problem before, usually having to do with food. If people are afraid they aren't going to get a big enough portion or the slice of pie that they want, you have one person divide it, and the other gets first choice. It's worked for my family, often when it literally applies to pie for dessert. But not every difficulty can be fixed that easily. And some people will not let disagreements go, even after they've supposedly been fixed. Again, that's part of human nature, but it's something God calls us to work on. So let's take a look at what Jesus says can be done when there are problems in a relationship. Even with his advice, it's not going to be easy. Disagreements rarely have a quick fix that lasts. The Gospel lesson for today is an interesting one. I decided to use the message version of it because 
of a very specific reason. I didn't agree with the word choice used by others. Now, the message is a paraphrased version of the ancient Hebrew and Greek texts. It's very easy to read, but it's not always true to the original tongue. But I found it interesting that some of the more literal versions of this passage have Jesus saying in verse 15 that if a member of the church sins against you, you confront him or her. But the church hadn't been invented yet. Jesus was with his group of disciples as they traveled the countryside. They weren't part of a church as we know it. Now, if what is meant by this word is people of a similar belief in action, then it can make sense. But we 21st century Christians have a different connotation of this term, especially when we sit in pews in a building. No, I think a better understanding of what is meant by church here is disagreements between fellow believers, ones who normally get along and have much in common. It's just not typical for them to be at great odds. Of course, Jesus isn't on this earth in the 21st century when it seems like everyone has a differing opinion and is confident in stating it. It was more rare back then that people of the same faith would have extreme disagreements. Most of them stayed in the same area they grew up in. They shared the same values. But if there was din deemed a sin, or in this case, a true wrong done, there had to be a way to get it figured out, a way made forward. Interestingly, in the Gospel of Matthew, there are two times that Jesus describes a way of conflict resolution. Here in chapter 15, it's the one who's been wronged who is asked to address the perpetrator. Back in chapter 5, it's just the opposite. Verses 23 and 24. So when you are offering your gift at the altar... If you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister. So there it's the one who did something wrong who should make the first move. I don't think Jesus got mixed up here. I think he means that whether you were wronged or you were the one who sinned, you can reach out to make it better. The first thing you should do is talk to the other person. Explain the situation, how it impacted you. It may be that the other person doesn't even know how much what happened affected you. Without communication, they may never know. That being said, there are better ways than others to tell people that they've hurt you. Think carefully about the words you use. You may want to rush in ready to attack the one who hurt you, but will that make much of a change in the person's attitude or actions? An old saying goes, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. By being respectful in getting your hurt across, it's more likely the offender will listen and make amends. If you go in angry or accusatory, it's natural for a person to feel attacked and on, be on the defensive from the start. That's usually not the best way to start a conversation. Oftentimes, when someone realizes that they did hurt someone, they will apologize. They'll want to do better in the future. That doesn't take away the hurt, but it certainly feels good to have someone want to change for the better. That can make something good come out of a bad situation. But at times... That doesn't work. Then Jesus says to get other people involved. Notice it's not the other way around. You aren't supposed to complain to other people about how bad this person is who hurt you. You go to others if you can't work it out, just the two of you. I know we want support when someone hurts us, but we have to be careful how we do that feeling that we're not alone while also not vilifying someone when there may have been a miscommunication or just plain unknown reasons for why it happened. If other opinions are needed, 
Others may help the offender to understand the pain that was caused. Sometimes, a different way of expressing something can get that meaning across. Hopefully that will work, getting more people involved. If not, then comes the really tricky part, taking it to the church. In other words, letting everyone know about the situation. In essence, letting it all be known in the court of public opinion. In some ways, I think this is the step many people start with nowadays because we have social media. So many grievances are aired in front of everyone, sometimes without even a chance for the accused to explain or apologize. In some ways, I think we are doing things backwards compared to what Jesus suggested. We first take our problems to the masses and only deal with them individually if we must. I don't think that's the way God, who created us and knows us inside out, thinks it should work. Only when we can't rectify the problem on our own should we make it everyone else's business. Hopefully we can figure things out before reputations are ruined and trust is severed completely. What Jesus says to do in solving conflicts makes a lot of sense, but it's hard to do in the real world. Oftentimes we're too scared or mad to talk things out with the one who hurt us. Sometimes the other person won't cooperate. At times we go in the opposite order of what Jesus suggested, and we take it to the church to sway people to our side. But the principles our Savior gave us make sense. Don't bury the situation. Communicate. And if you need to get others involved to solve it, do so. But be wise in how you do that. Choose people who will make the situation better, not worse. We know Jesus' ways work. They just take practice and commitment. I don't know how accurate this information is for today. It could be from a very old manual. But in a U.S. Army training guide for non-commissioned officers, there is offered a way of helping leaders handle two soldiers from the same barracks who are arguing with each other. They are to assign them both to wash the same window, one on the outside, the other on the inside. As they stand there with their cleaning solution and rags, they can't help but look in each other's faces. As they do, they will likely realize they have more in common than they might think. They're on the same mission and can hopefully put the petty disagreement aside while they wash the same dirty window. Again, a solution like that doesn't always work. But getting people to work together can lead to communication and the realization that we do have more in common than we have differences. Sometimes we just need a push in the right direction. Let us use what God gives us to solve disagreements in the most positive way possible and see how much better our world can be when we actually work together. Amen. And now we will have our... Well, if I can find the sheet, there we go. We will have our next hymn sung by Randy and Crystal, and this is number 507, Through It All.
to trust in God through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon God's Word. And now we will share in our joys and concerns for this morning. Um, we want to continue praying for Johnny King. Um, she is feeling a little bit better than she was the middle of the week, so that's a very good thing. But she's been experiencing some additional health difficulties um, and just kind of being tired, um, which is understandable. Um, she's in her 90s, but we pray for Johnny and for renewed, renewed um, energy and her daughter Susan um, certainly appreciates the prayers that are being lifted up. We continue to lift up Agnes Dunn. Um, she um, has a lot more, oh, a, a few more um, doctor's appointments this week, and she also fell again this week. So um, we, Agnes certainly needs our prayers as she goes through this difficult time. We pray for John Anson, the son of Pat, who did test positive for the coronavirus. He's feeling well, but prayers for his recovery are appreciated. And we did have some other um, relatives of people um, in our congregation who have tested positive for coronavirus this week as well. So, so continued prayers for everyone who has that. We continue to pray for Denise, Joanne Creason's grandson's wife as she goes through cancer. We pray for those who are off and about for the Labor Day weekend, um, and we certainly lift up our own Josh Bush. Um, he got good news and bad news this week. Um, Josh was um, hired as our new audiovisual um, director for the church, so we are very happy to have him officially on board. He's been doing a great job um, this summer, and we made it official this week. But it also was made official that he has torn his meniscus and he is now on two crutches as he wobbles around <laughs> the, the, the Princeton area. So we continue to pray for Josh. Um, we congratulate you and we also hope that, that your, your knee area will, will heal up as quickly as possible. Um, and just, I know it's difficult to have rain on Sunday morning, but it is good to have have the rain, and it sounds like we are definitely heading into fall um, with the weather um, this week, as well as a little bit more rain, but we can very be very glad that we're not in Colorado. John Guin told me that they are expecting eight inches of snow today, so we are not there yet, and for that we can be grateful. Um, I think that's all we have for today, so if you'll please bow your heads with me for the pastoral prayer, then we'll say our Lord's Prayer together. Redeemer God, you have sent us Christ to show us the way, yet our hearts are troubled in so many ways. We are a divided people. Even Paul wrote in his letters to newborn churches that they should be unified even in their diversity. Teach us this lesson, O God. Teach us to love brother and sister as your children, even when we disagree. Teach us not to build coalitions, but to seek solutions. Teach us not to spend time in being offended, but to pour our energy into understanding and making life better for all. We pray to you that our hearts do not become hardened, but remain open to new ways of thinking and doing ministry. O oh God, when our anxiety is high, it's easy to forget that we've pledged our lives to serving you. Guide us, even when we have difficulties hearing you, and help us to work for the good of your creation so that we can have a good future, all of us together. Hear us now as we lift to you that which is on our hearts, the people and situations important to us, those who particularly need you this day, and people who we may not even know, but who definitely need your touch. We also lift up the blessings that we know come from your generous hand. Allow us to feel your power and grace in our lives as we seek to live as your beloved children in this world. All this we pray through the grace of Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now um, we will have the prayer over the offering. As always, we are appreciative of all the, the offerings that have come in during the week um, through, through PayPal, through being put in the, um, the, the box outside the church, um, doors, mailed in. We certainly appreciate them all. For those who are here, you can put your offerings in the plates um, outside the entrances to the sanctuary. And may we continue to support our church and, and our God in what he's calling us to accomplish. If you'll please bow your heads with me for the offering prayer. Thank you, merciful God, for the bounty of your creation, for the gifts of the field and vine that nourish our bodies, souls, and hearts. Sustained by the spiritual meal, may we be able to understand your great love for us, and may these gifts that we've given back to you be able to support people near and far away. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above me. Believe it or not, it is now September. Um, we have gone through, we have completed more than eight months of this year, two-thirds of the year, and what a year it has been. Um, this is normally when we start up all the programs in the church again, when we are excited about choir um, joining up, the bells will be ringing in... in lot in a huge amount. We have Sunday school, we have youth group, we have all, all kinds of things going, and we are doing that on a limited basis, um, but we just can't do exactly what we would normally do. And that can be very frustrating. I know that. Um, not just for on Sunday, but for the entirety of the church, for all of your lives, with all the school and sports and everything else that we would have liked to have been able to do. But we also know that God is with us as we go through all of this. We may not be able to do everything as we normally did, everything as we would like to do, but we are able to still be the church. We are able to do ministry with and for people, and we are able to see God's hand at work in our lives. For that, we can be very grateful, and we never have to worry about that not happening. One of the ways in which we do experience our God, no matter what season or pandemic or whatever we are in, is through the act of Holy Communion. And so we remember that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He lifted it up to heaven. He gave thanks to God for it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when that evening meal was completed, Jesus took the cup. He lifted that up to heaven. He thanked God for it and asked God's blessing upon it. He gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. If you will please bow your heads with me for the prayer of consecration over the elements. Our loving God, the year 2020 has been a difficult year so far. We've had to change things. We can't do the things that we would like to do. And yet we can still feel you with us in our hearts. 
We are grateful that your Holy Spirit still moves throughout this earth. There is no, no difficulty that can ever stop that from being true in our lives. And that is certainly true in that you send your Holy Spirit to be upon the elements of Holy Communion each and every time we partake in it. So, Lord, we ask your Spirit to bless these elements. Be upon the wheat of the field and the fruit of the vine as they are a representation of your body and blood for each of us. Bless these elements, bless us, and let us be able to remember that you are with us always. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to anyone who has or seeks a relationship with Christ. For those that are here with me in the sanctuary, and if you have your, your um, prepackaged communion, if you will please um, take it. And at the very top, if you will un or lift back the very thin plastic um, part and take out the wafer. And please hold it until... Ever, they're not always the easiest to get open, I understand. So at this time, you may take down your masks um, and take and eat. This represents the body of Christ given out of his great love for you. And now if you will take the cup and gently peel back the gray foil, or the silver foil, so that it doesn't spill. And then you have that available to drink for the, the grape juice. And now, if you will take and drink, knowing that this represents the, the blood of Christ, which was shed for each of you out of his great grace and mercy. And we ask you to keep these with you and on your way out if you would like to um, put them in one of the waste baskets that are provided at the entries to the sanctuary. If you'll please bow your heads with me for the prayer following communion. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us what we need to be able to make it through difficult times. And that is most certainly through provided through your Holy Spirit. So sustained by the spiritual meal and the assurance of your grace, may our lives reflect your presence now and always. Amen. And now if you would like to stand, if you're able, for our closing song, which is Amazing Grace, on number 378, Randy and Crystal will share this song with us.
we have our benediction, just a couple of things. A reminder that if anyone would like to come for Holy Communion between 9.15 and 10.15, I will be out in the parking lot to deliver that with face shield on and umbrella. So, so we'll be protected in many, many ways. Um, and just a big thank you to everyone who helped out this morning. We thank Josh for running the, the AV and for Bruce running soundboard, John and Jeannie back at the PowerPoint, um, Randy and Crystal um, singing, and Charlie for sharing his beautiful music as well. And Marsha and John and Bill and Mark for helping out um, before the service as well. So if you will now please um, join me in the unison benediction. We go into the days ahead with strength in the spirit and confidence in Christ. May peace be within and among us. Amen. Go in the peace, love, and joy of our Lord. Amen. And we're going to start with over on this side. 